Hey everybody, it's Troy. Now I want to preface this video by saying that what I'm getting ready to discuss is in no way demeaning or degrading to anyone involved with this distribution. Heck, at the end of the day, it might be something that I've done. Who knows? But a couple of days ago, I did a video called Nabara OS Install and In-Depth Overview. They actually give you a nice little EULA explaining that this is a hobby distribution and you're basically using it at your own risk. So I put it on my production machine. I was going to do a 90-day evaluation of the operating system and see just how well it worked as a daily driver and as something I could use on my production machine. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you know right now that uh, my production machine is presently down and I have got to find a distribution to put on it to use as a daily driver. Now, let me explain to you what my experience was and what happened. After I made my video, after I edited my video and posted it, I just started doing some basic work, taking notes for what I wanted to do with my next video, just getting things kind of lined up. Well, the problems started immediately. About every five minutes, I got a notification, and that notification was there was an issue with the kernel, but there wasn't enough information to report. I kept trying to find the logs. I kept trying to find exactly what the kernel was doing, and it really wouldn't let me have access and really wouldn't do this, but this was a notification I was receiving every five minutes. So I tried to screenshot it so I could have it and put it back so that way I could reference it in the future and see if I could get these problems solved. It wouldn't let me screenshot it. So what I did was restart my system and then I tried to go ahead and upgrade or maybe look and see if there was an upgrade for the kernel and then go online and see if there was issues that other users were having with Nabara OS. Couldn't find anything. So I tried to work through that. It just got to the point to where it really got completely annoying. But I wanted to go ahead and do my next video, which was the Microsoft users feel degraded. And OBS wouldn't record. It would record for about five seconds and then shut off. Record for five seconds and shut off. So I figured, you know what? Maybe I just do a complete reinstall and see if that works. Well, I did that, updated, moved forward, same issues. I kept getting this kernel notification. And I just can't do it. I can't deal with that. So what I did was shut the machine off, restarted it one more time, and I continually kept getting these notifications. So I wanted to go ahead and screenshot it again to see if it was different than the previous notification I'd received, and it wouldn't let me take a screenshot. Same thing with OBS. It would run about five seconds and shut off, run about five seconds and shut off. Now, I understood when I downloaded this operating system that there might be some issues because it does warn you in the EULA that it is a hobbyist distro. You're using it at your own risk, but I've never had any trouble running a Linux distribution like this before. Now, I don't know if it was something I have done or if it might be a problem that other people are experiencing. And if you've experienced this issue, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. So at this point, I decided, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reinstall a different distribution on it, do some more reading up, reinstall it if I have to, and go from there. So I went ahead and put my USB in to go ahead and install Garuda Linux back on my production machine until I could get to the bottom of it and see what's going on. So I installed Garuda, went through the initial setup process, went to install. It wouldn't let me install. So I was like, wonder what's up? I didn't have permit. It didn't have permission to install on my hard drive. So I went ahead and went into the KDE Partition Manager. And when I did that, went ahead and found the partition that Nabara was installed on, went ahead and right-clicked on it, was just going to remove it, reformat, and then proceed from there. It wouldn't give me permission. I right-clicked on it, tried to remove the partition from the disk, and it would not give me access, would not give me permission. Now, at this point, I was like, okay, let me go ahead and see if I can screenshot or... OBS record this so that I can do a follow-up video and kind of show people what's happening. Nabara wouldn't let me do that. And at the same time, when I was trying to do it off the live USB, I didn't have the USB formatted in a way to where I could download OBS and actually record what I was going through. 
So I thought to myself, okay, here's what I'll do. I've got a Fedora USB lane right next to me. I'll go ahead and boot into that. Maybe Fedora's disks will let me go in and format it. So I booted up Fedora, went in, went into disks, right click to remove it, wouldn't let me remove it. It had my hard drive completely locked down. So I was like, this isn't making any sense. I should be able to have access to this. So what I did at this point was I went ahead and said, okay, well, I'll boot into the live USB of Nabara and see if it gives me permission. So I booted into the live USB of Nabara, went into disks, and at that point, I was able to delete the partition and reformat the drive. So I'm just giving you all a heads up. If you do install Nabara, if you try to install another Linux distro, you might run into the same issues that I ran into, which is when you go to install a different distribution, Nabara's got your hard drive locked down. You won't be able to access that partition unless you go back into a live USB of Nabara and actually delete the partition and then format it from there. So really what I'm saying here, guys, I don't know if it's a mistake of mine. I don't know if I did something wrong on two separate occasions installing this operating system. But I do know that once I reinstalled it for a third time, I was still getting the kernel notifications. Now, I've had some issues like this in the past on Garuda GNOME back in January of this year. So that's almost nine months ago because I was going to switch to Garuda GNOME and use it for 90 days and then do a review on it and let you all know how it worked out. But I ended up having to step away from it because I had some issues that I just could not work around or work with. So this is two different GNOME distributions that I've had problems with in the last nine months. Now let me preface this again by saying I'm not demeaning any of the work that is done by either the GNOME team, the Garuda GNOME team, or the Nabara GNOME team. Now what I'm saying is, it could it be something with GNOME? It could be. Could it be something with the operating systems themselves? Sure, it could be. But at the end of the day, I'm just telling you what I've been through. So I'm going to admit here that Nabarro OS probably isn't going to be on my 90-day use list anymore. And that Nabarro OS kicked my ass. It took me down. It didn't run as smooth as I expected, and then it, did, it had problems that I really didn't expect. I know this is a quick and just to the point video, but I'm just letting you all know out there. If you watched my Nabara OS video, that you could run into the same of the same problems I have. But maybe you're smarter than me. Maybe you're doing something different than me. Maybe you hold your mouth right and it'll work for you. But I do know this. After going through and constantly receiving the kernel notification saying there was an issue, but there wasn't enough information for it to tell me exactly what the issue was or to report, that that got annoying because it happened every five minutes. At one point, I remember opening my notifications and having eight of them in my notifications, and they were anywhere from four to six minutes apart. It wouldn't let me take screenshots, and it wouldn't let OBS work. So now my production machine is sitting in the corner, and I've got to figure out what I'm going to put on it. More than likely, I'm going to go with OpenSUSE, because that was the other operating system that I had asked people about prior to me putting Nabarro OS on my production machine. Now, if you're using Nabara OS, or you're thinking about installing it, or you're running it in a virtual box, or if you've already installed it, please, if you're running into any of these issues, please let me know about it in the comments below. But like I said, Nabara OS kicked my butt, took me down, and I'm going to have to go a different direction. Please do me a favor today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, throwing us a donation on PayPal, or zipping on over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.